Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofinet, the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. I'm freshly vaccinated, and uh, yeah, it kind of still hurts a little bit, but today we're going to be looking at a fresh new deck, particularly in the monster faction. So every six months, something around that, I try to return back to Deathwish and the uh, the Succubus archetype, basically. I, I want to call that an archetype. Why, why the hell not? So uh, today we're going to be looking at just that in the sensual nom noms deck. So since we're going into that wish, of course, we're using the overwhelming hunger leading ability with this very, uh, very cool decklist, if I can say so myself. There might be a few interesting decisions here, as you might uh, expect from me by now. Uh, but mainly the focus of this deck is just slam a lot of points with cards that can be eaten and will come back immediately, such as of course the Succubus herself and that love higher vampire. We could of course also include Ruin, but Ruin to me is definitely not worth his provisions at the moment. So uh, I'll be going through each and every single card one by one as usual. You can also find this deck list in the link in the description that will uh, guide you to the Play Gwent website where you can uh, of course upvote that deck list there and import it to your own game to play around with. If you're not interested in the description of every single card, you can also skip right ahead to the example matches in this video using the timeline down below. So with that being said, let's head straight into these cards. So first up, this is Deathwish, so of course we need to balance the amount of Deathwish units that we have with units that can consume those Deathwish units. So the Andrega Warrior is one such card, four provisions for four power, um, and on deploy you consume the adjacent units. So the one on the left and the one on the right. And you spawn a drone in the same row for each insectoid you consume. Usually that won't be happening, uh, aside from maybe the one time where you actually consume a drone. But other than that, this can be pretty hefty if you consume like two succubuses, uh, or succubi, I should probably say, uh, or any of the other Deathwish units in this deck. Then we have a single Megascope. So Megascope, on the ploy, you pick a bronze allied unit, and after two turns, you spawn a base copy of that unit to the right of Megascope. We're going to be using Megascope mainly as a backup for when we don't have another Succubus um, at hand or maybe they all have been banished. Uh, it's just the fourth option for the Succubus because we have two more in the deck and there's another artifact card that can uh, spawn one as well. But just a backup card in case that would go wrong. Now we have double Harpy Egg, probably one of the better Deadwish units right now because of the fact that Harpy is now six power, so three power for five provisions. And on Deadwish you spawn a Harpy and summon it to this row. So that is nine points in total if you manage to get it killed and with three power that should not be a problem. Now we have a double side as well giving us a little bit of damage potential so four power for five provisions and on deploy you destroy an adjacent ally unit and deal its power as damage to an enemy this has two functions either you can use it to destroy a death wish units and trigger its death wish ability and use that power instead of just getting it as your own point total but use it against your enemy you get the benefit from that wish there, but what you can also do is use one of your higher level, higher power uh, consuming units um, if you want to be careful not to have that big of a unit on the board and use that power to kill a high power unit on the other side of the field um, without getting the benefit of that wish, but of course getting the benefit of tall removal with just a five provision card. Now we have a single Vran Warrior. Um, you can shuffle around a bit with this uh, and get another one in the deck because Vran Warriors are actually pretty good. So four power and one armor and whenever a unit is destroyed you boost himself by one. It needs to be during your turn so if you use um, for example the Cyclops that we just saw um, if you manage to destroy one of your own units with that, which is always going to happen, and then use that damage to kill another unit, Vran Warrior will boost twice, because he triggers on enemy destruction as well, um, which will come in handy a lot more later on. Then of course the Succubus, the uh, card that this is, this deck is all about. So 5 power for 5 provisions and on that wish, probably one of the more complicated abilities. At the end of your turn, when a uh, Succubus dies, if there is another Succubus in your graveyard, you summon this exact Succubus from your graveyard to a random row and gain Doomed. Meaning that you don't, it's not like you summon the other Succubus that was in the graveyard. Um, you summon the same succubus that you just killed, so that might be important later on. Um, for example, it doesn't work with the uh, Urn of Shadows, 
even if you have another succubus in the deck because they won't pull that succubus out it only works on the same succubus same for abaya um, so very important to keep that in mind and that also means that it always has to have another succubus in the graveyard at adrenaline tree this card does not gain doomed so meaning that you can just continuously kill her when she will be coming back for an extra five points every turn so very powerful engine card if you look at it that way then a double bar guest of course we need more consume units five powerful five provisions on the boy you consume an allied unit and on order if you have dominance you can consume another one so basically a double consume card if you can keep dominance which should normally not be a problem with this deck. Then a double slizzard as well, same reason, five power for five provisions and on order you consume an allied unit on this row and you can do that every single turn. So basically, possibly giving you a consume every turn, but of course this card needs to survive a single turn before it can be used initially. So a bit of a dangerous card, but I prefer it uh, compared to wear rat because wear rat can come uh, become really really big really fast and that's just a very juicy target for your opponent but if you like wear rat you can just remove both of them get wear rat in and another four provision cards um like for example the uh, the noon raid and then we have abaya abaya has uh, been buffed uh, recently as well because she can now trigger an allied unit stat wish ability and not just a bronze allied unit stat wish ability so she can uh, trigger any gold card as well four power for six provisions and thrive so uh very powerful because for example if you put her on um is it maruna i think it's maruna so the other succubus um you basically get 12 points on the ploy which is really really good then parasite of course we need a little bit of removal so damage an enemy unit by six or boost an allied unit by six instead so pretty straightforward and then where cats a lot of people um stiff out on Werecats and they don't really want to include this card in the deck. I really like the card. So 3 power for 7 provisions has Thrive and on deploy you damage all enemy units on the opposite row by 1 and on that wish you repeat the deploy ability. So basically a Lacerate but with a Baya this basically becomes a Dragon's Dream. So 3 damage on the entire row if you manage to uh, trigger this card three times and technically you could do it four times uh, if you also use the, uh, the stratagem card on Werecat. We're not going to be doing that of course but if your opponent is swarming this card is very powerful because that could be up to 21 points and maybe a bit more if you trigger Thrive a few times with this. Then k of course six power has immunity and on deploy you consume three allied units usually going to go on to Detloff and the Succubi. Um, giving you just a boatload of points, usually 20 plus points with just this card alone, which is just, yeah, very, very powerful. Then Dol Du Lok, the location card for monsters. Not as powerful in its own right, but uh, has resilience, of course, as all location cards do. Uh, not that we'll be using the resilience of this card. But on deploy, you spawn and play a Succubus, Fuka, Chimera, or Hybrid. We're always going to go for the Succubus, giving us our fourth option for the Succubus. And on order, so on the next turn, you can move the highest power unit to the top of your deck and spawn a drone on both sides of this card. So basically giving you a bit of uh, consistency on putting one of your strong cards up top. Uh, there are no cards in this deck that are stronger than six power so you will always be getting uh, one of the better cards in this deck. Then we have Whispering Hillock of course uh, the organic card where you tutor a death wish unit from your deck. Simple as that you can use that to get whatever part that we're missing or maybe a succubus that we were missing and uh, that's just gonna work out very nicely. Then Maruna. Maruna is an extremely powerful card. So six power for nine provisions. So she's one of the cards that you can pull with Dol Du Lok. And on that wish, you seize a random enemy unit with four or less power. Uh, you can do this up to three times if you play your cards right. So Maruna can be triggered by the Urn of Shadows, giving you an extra eight points because you lose your opponent those four points and you gain them yourself. Um, then she can be triggered by Abaya again and then of course on her own Death Wish ability. She can also be copied but usually I don't go for the copy with that. Because of course there is also the Arakas Queen in this deck. So that's the uh, new monster leader card that has been introduced uh, two months ago. Six power for ten provisions. Again, one of those six power cards that you can grab with Dol Lock. And on deploy, you consume an allied unit. And if it's an insectoid, you spawn and play Arakas Nest. We will never be doing that. So it might sound really cool, but we'll never be doing that. We're never getting an insectoid. Because on that wish, which is her more interesting ability, you spawn a base copy of the consumed unit on this row. Meaning that uh, Alakas Queen can basically copy any monster card. Um, 
I think this card is a bit weird since it basically counteracts what um, Garantir was trying to, the, the Garantir nerf was trying to stop. And now they just added a card that can also copy any card in the game. Um, for monsters, that is. Because it, does, it doesn't even uh, limit it to a monster allied unit. So if anybody comes up with a really cool neutral card that they can uh, copy or they want to copy, go ahead. This is the place to go. I'm almost thinking about making, a, making an Aragas Queen Alzur deck, which would be insane. But uh, yeah, so you can copy any unit you want to. Usually we're going to be going for Detloff. Because that love is another 18 points if you manage to uh, consume all of those and with the amount of consumes we have that should not be a problem if you don't have that love succubus is also a very good uh, option to copy as well then of course we talked about him just now that love higher vampire also six power for 10 provisions see i uh, kind of took that into account and on that wish you summon this unit from the graveyard to the same row again so basically every time you consume him he comes back up to two times so he has a uh, two turn well two action counter um and it does not refresh when he leaves the battlefield which is i think the reason why they don't use counters um because counters i think do get reset once you go to the graveyard uh so they had to make a, a very different way of showing that uh with that love higher vampire but if you copy him with uh, the arga screen you get another one if you use the urn of shadows or abaya on the arga screen you get another that of higher vampire so that's the combo that we're going to be going for and then uh, a bit of a juicy card that I wanted to add in this deck and I never used before in a deck guide on this channel is Yaga. So one power for 12 provisions and on deploy if you have Sabbath, so a row of 25 points or more, you gain zeal on her order ability. Yeah, that's a her. Um, it's, it's the Witch Queen, so that's definitely a her. So on order, you consume a four provision unit and then increase the provision value by one. And you can do this every two turns. Might not sound as much as you might think, but that consuming can also happen on the other side of the board. So if you're facing something like a Gedanite deck, uh, a Shrooms deck for Skellige, then those uh, very high-powered Crow Clan Preachers are still for provision. Same against Syndicate, where the, uh, the Sea Jackals are for provision. You take all of those points away and you consume them on your own side. So example, if you have a 12-point Jackal on the other side, you eat that up, it's gone, and then get those 12 points on top of that. So Yaga is then 25 points on deploy, which is just insane. Um, you might want to trigger her on the uh, third last card. So if you still have three cards in your hand and she is the card that you play, then you get another uh, op well, opportunity to use her. Unless you feel like there's stall removal incoming, then of course you can just play her as your final card and grab the highest four provision unit on your opponent's side of the board. Which, uh, yeah, can be more than you expect. If you don't have any of those cards, you can still consume any of your own units, of course, that have that wish and just use her that way. And then, of course, this is a Death Wish uh, deck, so we're always going to go for a Haunt, the Scenario card. Um, the Scenario card progresses whenever you play a Death Wish unit. We have plenty of those. And first, you spawn a Desert Banshee, which uh, allows you to consume an allied unit on order and also boost yourself by one whenever you play a Death Wish card. Then you play a bar guest on the next Dead Wish unit you play. And then, of course, the Night Raid, where you spawn two rats in a row. And if you eat her, you get another two rats. So, easy peasy. And then our stratagem, we talked about that already. The Urn of Shadows allows you to trigger any Dead Wish ability on your side of the board. This can be bricked. It has happened a few times to me by now. Um, but there's still plenty of Dead Wish units on, in this deck to allow you to trigger this. Even if you just trigger it on a Harpy Egg, that's still six points with, a, with your stratagem, which is a very good. But usually you're going to be trying to aim this at Maruna, because Maruna gives you an extra eight points if you target her correctly. And then Overwhelming Hunger is our leader ability where you uh, get two charges of the order ability where you destroy an allied unit, so this doesn't count as a consume. Uh, but you spawn an Akimara in the same row and boost it by the destroyed unit's power, so giving you basically two Death Wish triggers for free with three extra points on top of that. So um, very, very powerful ability that has been nerfed quite a while ago because uh, originally this ability had three charges, but I think two is fine as well. So, with that being said, let's head straight into a few example matches. And then the first opponent for the Sensual Nom Noms deck is Enslave. That is, of course, not that cool. Because Enslave, it's probably going to be Enslave 6, I would think. Yeah, Enslave 6. So that means that all of our powerful cards can be taken over by that bad boy. 
Uh, so I'm going to have to be careful about that. Um, we have quite a few Dead Wish units in hand, but the problem is that we don't have any Dead Wish units that we can trigger with the Urn of Shadows, and we do start. We can get rid of most of the consumes here, because I have plenty, and we get all of our good cards, but not the cards that I really want to play here. Um, let's start out safely with the Vran Warrior. It's always a good bet to start with, and I can actually grab Maruna with the Whispering Hillock, so we're definitely not... Um, bricked just yet and i think i might actually just go for that i need to be careful i can actually play maruna in the back here so if i play maruna in the back she's six but can be assassinated because she's right next to the Vran warrior and then we can trigger her and we get that um fire scorpion on our side of the field which is fine i guess and then we get the blight maker which is going to be triggering a few extra cards, and the Vrian Warrior takes a hit on top of that. Now, I won't be triggering any um, tactics here, so that card is basically useless for me. Uh, but we could trigger Maruna again with Abaya. Might be a bit overkill for what we're doing right now, now that I think about it. So let's just trigger Maruna again with the Bargus, and if we only get the uh, two power mage assassin, that is absolutely fine by me. So, Argus into Maruna, which will boost the Vran Warrior a bit. And we get the Mage Assassin, sadly. And I'm just going to use the Blight Maker. Uh, well, the Fire Scorpion to hit the Blight Maker. And then we have the Vanandal Elite going up to 9 points, which is uh, pretty fine. Um, hmm... I'm going to play the Succubus already now. I could consume... Yeah, I can consume it with the Barghest if I want to, just to avoid it getting stolen. And we get another point on the Vran Warrior with that as well. And then we get Menno Kuhorn, probably Assassination, yeah, on the Vran Warrior now, because that was going to get uh, a bit out of hand there. don't have the best layout now. Because I want to keep Arika's Queen... Uh, Abaya and Detloff just readily available, although most of them will probably just get taken away. Yeah, this is going to be pretty tough because Detloff is going to be gone, so I'm going to have to use Arca's Queen on a Succubus, but that would be fine as well. I'm just going to pass now and see, uh, see what happens next. And then we get Bribery, which is fine by me because that's actually a pretty powerful card that's out of the way. And that is six points on the, on the dollar there. Because they don't get any benefit from consuming units. I don't know why they're hesitating, they should just pick three units. Okay, wow, that took a long time for you to decide which ones you were going to eat. There we go. 23, 22, that was pretty clean from them. Um, yeah, there's not much I could, could have done about that. It's just because I don't want to use my best cards right now. If I can pull Haunt as well. Ooh, pull the lock is always nice as well. Um, although Dull the lock might be... Ooh, Haunt. Ooh, Haunt. That is always nice. And Drega Warrior is good for the extra consumes. I'm almost tempted to get rid of the Cyclops now. Um, although with Enslave, we might be facing... Yeah, it's going to be Defended anyway. We can't get rid of that Defender easily. Do I keep Cyclops and just get rid of Andrega Warrior? No. Let's get rid of Cyclops. We get Slizzard in return. Okay. And we get a succubus. Um, so that's our succubus, by the way. So that's the one from our graveyard. Um, so I'm going to just play Dolduloc now. Because otherwise the, there wasn't any benefit to it before. But now there is. So I can just play another succubus right here. And that one could be seized now. If they want to take out my entire game plan, that's the way to go. Ooh, they're going to actually keep going. That's another nine points. That's another nine points. So I get two points from this, so that's seven. And now I need another seven, but I'm not going to get there, I think, without spending the cards that I really don't want to spend right now. Um, but I'll, I still have a few Harpy eggs in here as well. I'm going to put down this lizard and see if that one actually survives or not. Might be that our opponents will pass in a minute, but... I feel like they're doing pretty okay for themselves. Okay, Coded Weapons is going to banish and put one on top. Uh, which is fine, because that means I still have another one in my deck now. 
So I can put the succubus I still have in hand on the board now. And work from there, yeah. I'm gonna hold off a little bit. This could be seized. Um, but if I can copy it with uh, Argyle screen, we're basically good to go. And we get a pass, okay. Then I don't need to eat it. Um, so I'm just gonna use Andrega Warrior and get another uh, point out of that one. There we go. There we go. So now we get a Succubus guaranteed on top of our deck. We basically have a perfect hands already. If we don't win this, that then it's just a... a because, yeah, we were owned beforehand already. Because it's not the best matchup. Um, we do get a Megascope here, but I'm really, really aching for some, uh, some consumes here. Because um, I have the Deathwish potential, and Megascope is... Yeah, either that succubus gets removed or I can copy it with Arika's screen. So I think it's fine to not go for that. The only other option would be Werecat. Um, but I think the ones that are still remaining are either more consume options, which is also not that bad. Let's see. Ah, uh, we got a Cyclops, okay. Um, so there's no point in delaying this. We're just going to put down a uh, Haunt immediately. Um, if that gets Karate Heatwave, then that's what's going to happen, but there's not much we can do about it, because this deck does not have a Defender. Um, we do get a Fire Scorpion, uh, which is fine. Next up is then Death of Higher Vampire. I'm going to be um, taking out every single charge of that. Because um, if he doesn't um, get seized, there might be something else happening, and I don't want to just see that happen. I'm not going to use the Desert Banshee. I'm going to actually use the uh, Overwhelming Hunger Charge. Otherwise, I have two 11s then, and I'm really scared about two 11s. But there we go. Let's just do two 11s. And that's 28 points after two cards, which is very powerful. But our opponent can, of course, now seize that that love, which is, I think, what they're going to be going for here. Oh, and there is an Igni. Really scared about two 11s, but there we go. Let's just do two 11s. There is an Igni. Okay. Oh, but they don't take... Aha! Uh -huh. They don't take the Deadloff away. That was... Not that smart, I think. So now I can do this. And that's 11. 11 is perfect for them to... Yeah, I should have put the... Um, the Night Raid over there. Abaya is bricked now. So if they have another assassination, they can assassinate Arkal's Queen and then grab her. So I need to eat the Arca screen now. There's not much else I can do about that. Um, yeah, I need to. And there we go. We get another Deadloff for our troubles. That one can now, of course, be seized. But it's better than the Arca screen being seized, I think. Yeah, there we go. And then we get Joachim the Wet. Which is going to be taking the Mage Assassin. Woohoo! The Mage Assassin. Does that mean we have... Oh, wow. No, we don't have, we definitely don't have um, dominance. Well, not dominance, Sabbath just yet. I could do Abaya now. Abaya will fill that row. Is that a problem? Not really. Uh, so Abaya can go on the Night Raid. So that is filling up that row. And that now has 26. So I could technically go for, yeah, Yaga now. Because Yaga can take that 10 point assassin now. So we get War Cancel, top three cards. That is going to take three points away from our side of the board. But that's not a problem. I can consume... Hmm, although I can't. I can't, can I? It's not a problem just yet, but... I would have loved that row to be a little bit uh, smaller. And then the Cow Carcass is basically useless. Okay. I could kill. I could actually just toss the car Cow Carcass back. Um, but the succubus is going to come in first, because right now I don't have the um, the Sabbath going. So I'm going to just overwhelming hunger the uh, succubus. She's going to come back onto this row. There we go. Surrender is actually good. That is actually not too bad. I'm going to keep Yaga until the very end then. Um, I can now do Kron and Kron is gonna be up by 10 is 16 is 24 
Damn it, Suyaga, I still need to have more than that. If the succubus lands on the on the, the same road, that's gonna be perfect. Um, but Kron is gonna eat the nitrate, succubus. I could eat the Akimara, but yeah, I don't want to risk it, so I'm just going to eat the Joachim. So that's two rats over there, and then Succubus goes over there. That is still fine. I'm going to have to risk it with Yaga, by the way. Because um, since the Succubus is now on the other side, the own... Oh no, I can't actually use Yaga, because Yaga is the one point that will put me to Sabbath. Okay, that's fine. That is absolutely fine. Um, I can now do... I could do Yaga, but that's a bit too soon, isn't it? Yeah, let's do Yaga now. That should give me Sabbath. Yeah, <laughs> that was just enough to get those 10 points. So that's a 20 point swap and the Succubus is back and I can do that one more time now. Unless we get Erden in that deck as well, but that would be absolute horseshit. Both Igni and Erden in an enslaved deck. And we get Ardol. Oh. So that swaps everything out a little bit. I can still eat the... Because um, I can still do this. I can eat the... Um, oh no, it's been increased. Yeah, so that's now five points. So I can eat the succubus, which is fine. Yeah, okay, right. Because that remained the same. So the uh, provisions were already increased to five. Ah, now they're going to grab the succubus. Or not. Oh, our guests. Our guests. But they don't have dominance, and I don't think they'll have a way to keep dominance. So I'm now going to use the Cyclops to uh, take out the Succubus and then hit the Blightmaker, which is now the highest power. I don't have a dirty and that's 11 points ahead. So they can't use the Consume right now. And that's it. Yeah, wow. <laughs> that was close. That was a really cool match, though. That Igni was a kind of, kind of a bit of bullshit because I was hoping that there was not going to be Igni there. But uh, yeah, pretty well played, I should say. I'm already happy for today. I've beaten uh, Nilfgaard and Slave. And now we get hit with Imprisonment immediately. Great. It's Toxic Day today, apparently. So Imprisonment and Enslave back to back. Um, still a pretty good hand to start with. Um, I don't need that many consumes in the first round. That's all my good cards again. Um, to which I almost want to say this is not going to work out. <laughs> I don't have enough. I do actually not have enough consumes right now. Abaya is really fun in the first round as well though. And where rat could come in handy. I'm almost tempted to just get rid of that love for now. Or maybe Arika's Queen. Let's get rid of Arika's Queen for now and then the Megascope. Yeah, okay, Slicid is going to be a tiny bit better. Um, let's start out with Slizzard and just see what happens because our opponent probably has a lot of options to just get rid of all of those cards since it is imprisonment. Gonna be locking stuff constantly. Okay. Um, gonna be playing the Vran Warrior next to the Slizzard right now. We'll see how that continues on. And since we don't have Maruna, the best option for the Urn of Shadows is gonna be the Harpy Egg for sure. So just straight up points onto our board. And then we get poison on the slizzard. It's actually not that much of a problem. Um, I could just eat the slizzard now, which I think would be a bit premature. Because right now these slizzards will only be an eight point um, if I eat the harpy egg even. And I sh probably shouldn't. I'm just gonna use the urn of shadows on the harpy egg. And that is fine. I could eat it to get another six points, that, but that means that that poison goes up to eight points instead of just five. So let's just leave it at that for now. So now we get Bratens. Bratens is gonna assimilate the harpy egg. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I could just for funsies now also trigger the harpy egg with uh, Abaya, but Abaya is usually stronger on. Um, What's his name? The Arcas Queen. Um, so let's just parasite the Bratens here. So I can get rid of that. Uh, we could even eat the Harpy Egg now, but still six points ahead. That's nothing to scoff at. 
I'm actually trying to bait out the um, one of the imprisonment charges, but it doesn't seem to be happening right now. Yeah, let's just grab the Harpiac with um, the Bar Guest and we get another bit of six points on top of that. So that's 11 points in one go. 12 points ahead. There might be another poison incoming in a minute. Coup de grâce on... Okay, the Duchess Informants. And they can get Lizard now, which is good. Wait, what? I would have put that on the other row, where you can actually, you know, consume stuff. Apparently not. So I don't have Dominance now, um, which is not that much of a problem. I could technically go for it. Yeah, the other cards are just too good. We saw that in the previous match as well. It's probably better to keep my good cards for later in the game than it is to try and get them on the board now and five points is something that Milfgaard usually struggles with especially in the way that the cards are set up now they need to do six points which there we go just turn each house is not enough and they can't consume yeah okay they thought they could consume the harpy egg with the slizzard there yeah that was not the smartest idea so for slizzard the cards that you want to consume need to be on your row so consume an allied unit on this row which is why they should have put that over there and now they need to use an imprisonment charge to get this around with only one card down so that was perfectly played they just made a big mistake that was not a good uh, a good choice there okay next round Dolduloc is always good we can get the succubus train going and we get the megascope which is useless for now cyclops is pretty good and I can keep... Hmm, I don't have a lot of consumes right now. So if our opponent starts pushing, that would be bad. So I'm going to keep the second succubus, but I'm going to get rid of the wear cat. And we get another death wish unit. Okay, that's fine. I can actually trigger Doldy Lock um, to put the highest power unit on top of my deck. But I can still use it to get two drones in the next round, which is two points of carryover, which is something. And I, of course, can get a succubus in my graveyard. So that's probably the smarter option, even though it clutters my board just a little bit. Um, but if I can get enough consumes, that should not be a problem with this deck. It's not like we're going very wide with everything. Um, we can definitely just take care of all those small uh, units on the board. So Bargast is a consume. That is actually really interesting. Uh, we get both of the succubuses. Succubi? Um, so I can get rid of one of them. We get Werecat back, but I really want some consumes. I've been tooting the horn of Werecat all this time, so I'm definitely going to keep Werecat and get rid of the Harpy Egg. And we get Draga White. Okay, that's an ulti double consume, so that is really good. Um, so we're going to start out with Abaya. Uh, no, no, fuck. I wanted to start with Haunt, but yeah. Never mind. That was a huge misplay. One after the other, I suppose. That card was right next to each other, and I was just going too quickly by also being... Yeah, also narrating the entire thing. Um... Well then, I suppose we can try... I can kill the Thirsty Dame now, just to have it early of the board. Um, let's do that. Um, it's just gonna be so much points otherwise. So many points otherwise, so let's just get rid of it. Yeah, I totally misplayed there. I should have started with Haunt. And I misclicked. I even said a bio, which is... <laughs> I just read what the, the pop-up said. Like, we're gonna play this card. No, I, I definitely meant to play the scenario card first. So Masquerade Ball is not that much of a problem as long as the poisons wait, get just triggered very early. Because as long as I play, play my cards right here, I don't even need to play a very powerful card on the board. Because I can do Haunt now, but that's only going to be 4 points initially, unless our opponent has Kuralti Heatwave, which is definitely an option in this meta. Trying to be as toxic as possible. We did see Briatons already as well. And we get Mano Kuhorn, which is... Not an Aristocrat, so that will not trigger the Masquerade Ball. And we get a Cockatrice. A damn cockatrice, which is not going to damage anything, because, yeah, you don't have any adjacent beasts. Okay, haunt it is then. Still only four points, so even poisoning won't change that much there. And I think that is a four provision card for me to eat, yeah. So for Abaya, that is. But I don't think I'll get the Sabbath. Sabbath seems unattainable with that many poisons in the deck. That is an aristocrat. And we get the usurper. 
and that's the poison over there. And then of course you need to trigger Usurper there because uh, otherwise I'm just going to eat those spies. I could eat the Banshee, but that's probably not the best idea. Um, that laugh, I'm going to put that all on the same row because I really want to try and get... Um, yeah, you know, Sabbath going. Uh, so that's a single consume. Does it hurt for me to get another one on it? Because it could get locked, but then I'm just going to play Arakas Queen anyway, so that is fine. I don't have a Baya anymore to just use that on um, on Arakas Queen, so that is locked, that is fine. If they manage to kill it now, that's actually worse, because then I don't have a way of getting it back. And that's Joachim on the same row. I think that already gives me Sabbath, yeah, it does. It gives me Sabbath, and now there's a 12.4 provision card on the board. I'm not going to play... Um, yeah, the Witch Queen, Yaga too soon. I can still wait one more card. Uh, so that means that I can also put down the Arakas Queen over here. Eat that Loft. That's going to give me another that Loft in a minute. Because now, of course, I'm not going to wait for the lock. I'm going to actually eat the Arakas Queen here. And then the Bar Guest can eat... Um, the Bar Guest can eat... I need to eat something at least. Mm, the Bargas can eat that laugh again. Although I don't really need to now. I'm gonna just eat the uh, Night Raid. There we go. So now, of course, that could get locked. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm making my units a bit too uh, big for my poisony opponent here. And then we get a poison from the Van Morlehem Cup Bearer. We actually still have Dominance. I could eat that Bargast, but I'm. Um, Unless my opponent has a double poison in hand, which is still possible, I can just keep eating that. But first, we have five cards left, so you need to go for an uneven amount of cards if you want to play um, Yaga as much as possible. So we're going to be playing Yaga and eat that 12 point Fangs of the Empire. I could eat the Bargus now, but I think it's high time that they get an extra... I can make it a little bit harder for them to eat that. Because um, I still have four consumes in hand, so yeah, I'm just gonna just gonna do this. It costs them another poison now to kill it, so that is gonna be fine. And I can definitely put a double consume in between those two cards now. And then we get for cards. For card is gonna play coup de grace onto yeah the Joachim. I'll play a five provision card now. That would be insane. No, okay, <laughs> not got sergeant. There are five version cards for me to eat now, by the way. I can just, I can just slam a succubus on the board and that will be fine. Uh, for now, there is no poison on the board, so I can just do uh, wear rat on the front row, which is also eight points. Um, which is good, I think. That's just absolutely fine. Set a unit's power to its provision cost. Ooh, that kills the, um, the 17. Wow. That was a good one. That was a really good one. Um, so now, Yaga is gonna be poisoned. Um, there is no... that's four provisions. Okay, I can still eat the succubus at least with Yaga. It's still gonna give me five points. Ah, it doesn't really matter, I think, at this point. Yeah, the amount of poisons we're facing, it's really hard to keep track of all of that. I could eat Yaga now, because Yaga... I don't think Yaga has a target. It has Cyclops as a target, but that doesn't really help. Do I eat Yaga or not? I think I'm going to. I'm gonna eat Yaga now. So there we go. Definitely not the best option, but I can now do Succubus. Eat Succubus with Bar Guests. But yeah, if Bar Guest gets now poisoned as well, I won't be able to do anything against that. Look at the amount of poisons on the board. Jesus Christ. Masquerade Ball, and there's probably another, like a Yennefer's Invocation in there somewhere as well. Since they have Joachim, it would be weird that you don't include Yennefer's Invocation. And we get Experimental Remedy. Does that take... okay. Just the Duchess Informant. Duchess Informant and a Cyclops, which is gonna... Why would you kill that? That is just gonna hit your... your stop hitting yourself, as everybody says. I'm gonna put Succubus over here. Because I think that love always comes back on the same row. So if you then eat that love with Bargast, he goes up to 24. Uh, and I'm pretty certain I can just fill this row now. Um, yeah, I don't need that row anymore. So I'm just gonna do this. 
That's delicious. Aristocrat going up to 10, and then I can eat both the succubus and the uh, Dadloff, and we should just have enough space to just keep them coming back. There we go. I always hate that succubus comes back into the late form, but if you now have Jennifer's invocation, it's done anyway. Destroy an enemy with status. That's 12 points. Ooh. <laughs> Wow, even with that amount of tall removal, we still managed to pull out the draw. That was insane. So that shows that consuming sometimes is the better option. Because um, Bargast, of course, didn't have a status, so they couldn't destroy that. But wow, what a match. So let's try it for at least one match that is not against Nilfgaard. There we go. So at least we got three different leader abilities. <laughs> Double cross. Frickin' double cross. Okay, I think I have enough consumes in hand, so we might get as well get rid of a few of those. k -Ron. I don't need k -Ron this early, I think. Um, so let's get rid of k -Ron and we get Haunts. Not that bad of a start, I think. We can definitely manage with what we have, but it uh, doesn't seem like we'll be winning the first round here. Galvet as a first card. That is a power play if I've ever seen one. Just a consistency, consistency card that puts uh, every uh, highest power cost card at the top of your deck, which is uh, A-OK. -okay. Let's start out with Slizzard. Put Slizzard on the row, Let's see what happens with that. It's a nice consume card. That is also a good bait for any type of removal cards that my opponent wants to play. So that's basically the few cards that I really like to start with in round one, just Slizzard to see what happens. Um, then the Vran Warrior or maybe a Consume Unit if the, um, yeah, like for example now Slizzard is damaged a bit, so it doesn't really hurt to put him to 6 with uh, a Harpy Egg, and that just gets eaten up, nom 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 nom, very quickly by those nom noms. So that's basically, I mean, I never talked about it, but that's the reason why it's called Sensual Nom Nom, Sensual because of the Succubus. And nom noms because we eat a lot of stuff. Wild Hunt Hound. Are you freaking kidding me? Um, we could actually take that. We could actually, but it should be, we would be really lucky to get that. So I'm just going to put the Vran Wire down and just get the Slizzard up to 12, which also gives us dominance. Um, so yeah, this one is not going to go up anymore. And you get another Imperial Diplomacy. Basically just spamming their bad cards away. And that is going to be a big surprise. A harpy egg. Hmm. I would love a harpy egg. I mean, right now I can go for half of the minus four cards. So Maruna is definitely a good option here. The Slizzard is getting really big, but I didn't start. So the God damn it, that was not the one that I wanted. But at least we're still uh, we're still ahead now. And then we get a spying tag on the Slizzards, which usually means that we're gonna. Get, yeah, we're gonna get eaten, aren't we? Um, so might as well put the Bargus down now and eat the Blightmaker. I guess there's another point of the Vian Warrior. Why not? We're just slamming bronzes anyway. Uh, but we might get Vincent from Morlehem now. Oh no. They're gonna get a Slizzard of, them, of their own. That is nice. So they can finally eat that Harpy Egg then. I can get the Succubus in the graveyard already, which is gonna be just enough points. I don't have a so there we go. That's just enough points, but they can now eat their Harpy Axe, so they're definitely going to be winning this round. And then we get Tourney Jousts. And they eat the Harpy Axe. So that is 9 points that I need to circumvent, which is not that big of a problem, actually. I could even go with a Succubus already and just keep eating it. That might actually be the better option. And then hope I get, because I, of course, use my tutor for that. Um, but yeah, Whispering Hillock into Succubus which is now Adrenaline, so I can get the Succubus back. And that gets us two points more than our opponent. It does go to the wrong row now, but I still have an Andrea Wire. if you just want to push this a little bit further. I'm just baiting out the tall removal card that I know is coming. I can do that now because I'm, I'm not starting, so those 20 points I couldn't care less. If they want to just spend one of their tall removal cards on that now, that is absolutely fine. And there we go, Curl out the Heat Wave. That was what I was hoping for, because that means Kuralti Heatwave can now no longer be used to catch uh, Haunt out of my uh, hand. Uh, so we're going to definitely stop it there. 
So I'm hoping for one more succubus now in hand. Um, and that laugh, that would be ideal. If you can also get Abaya, even better. But um, yeah, we're going to be taking this slow. K-Run is always good. A lot of consumes if we can get the cards for it as well. Megascope is now useless. Cyclops is always good in a pinch. Um, and we don't need Andrega Warrior if we have K-Run. And we get another Cyclops. Okay. Oh, crap. Okay, just a mushy truffle. So I don't have, just realized, I don't have two Death Wish units now. And the main focus of the um, the Atacast Queen is getting another card, so I basically bricked my entire hand now. This is annoying. Because uh, I don't even get a Death Wish card out of uh, Haunt beforehand, so it's not like I can force this in any way. So let's just put Cyclops down. Okay, we got a pass. Luckily, luckily, because otherwise we would have been freaking boned. Okay, there we go. Cyclops, um, I actually need to use it now so I can just do this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that was good because otherwise that would have been um, very bad, like extremely bad. But now at least we're equal cards and I can still get some juicy things out of my deck, hopefully. That laugh, please. That laugh, that laugh for the succubus. That, that laugh, thank you. Hoo wee Um... So this is good. Definitely can get a double consume out of that. Um, can get rid of Parasite and Andrego. Oh, Why yeah, we get Doldy Lock. Oh my god. Oh my god, that is insane. Um, so yeah, definitely start with Haunt. Get that going as fast as possible. The only card that we don't get is uh, Yaga. Which might be a problem if our opponent just plays Bribery. We get Bratens, which is going to give them a consume. Oh no, just Emissary. That is fine, I think. Um, so, since we don't have Yago, we need to not look at Sabbath, so we don't really care about that. Um, so we can just go with uh, Deadlove Hire Vampire there, and then just put the uh, Bar Guests... Yeah, let's put the Bar Guest over here. It's going to be two boosted units on the same row here. Um, but at least we still have an option to... Because uh, Argos Queen is going to come over there. It's going to get... Oh, crap. Okay. Okay, that is just lazy. Um, and I still have Kron in hand as well. Wait a second. I can still get this out. I can put Harpy Egg up there. And then do this. That gives us two Death Wish units. Um, and next up is going to be Dol du Lok. Because Dol du Lok is going to give us the succubus we need. And we can start eating that. Now Ditches and Form is going to grab the, uh, the Harpy Egg. Fine by me. Um, so Dol du Lok now can also go on this row. Um, I'm going to put the succubus over here. And that is going to give us Dominance again. So that's 13. And then the Harpy Egg is 14. Um, that is that. The end of his invocation is also gold now, which is good. I can now eat the succubus with Arakas Queen. They're doing double cross now, aren't they? So Arakas Queen is still in my hand, so they can use that on Bratens even. Although Bratens, I mean, Arakas Queen just spawns, so Bratens wouldn't be a good target. If they use double cross now, that's a big issue. And they basically need to, right? If they know what I'm going to do... Yeah, okay, then they missed out on my biggest combo here, because now I'm going to play Arika's Queen over here. I'm going to eat the Succubus, uh, and then I'm going to eat the Arika's Queen, which is going to give us another Succubus, and I'm going to eat that as well. Is that going to give us two Succubus cycles in one go? Which is why this is called the Sensual Nom Noms deck. Oh, and that's just perfect. That is perfect. They're placed perfectly next to each other. So I can use the Andrega Warrior to get the Succubuses out now. Um, and the only things they can get from my hand are two Consumes. So they can get that love out, of course. But then I would have played that love first and not just done that. Okay, that worked out perfectly. That's going to be a big difference in point total. Yeah, you're, you're basically over. So Bribery now is going to 
Maybe bleed? Maybe bleed. Maybe bleed get them, Yaga. Fuck. Okay, those were prophetic words, aren't they? But they can only use her once. Um, so that is fine. So the only thing that they're gonna take is that 14 point Desert Banshee. Unless I eat it. Unless I eat it. Yes, of course. Of course. And it's immune, so we don't really care that K-Ron doesn't get the... Um... Yeah, of course. We're just gonna eat it. <laughs> so Desert Banshee and the two Succubuses. There we go. You're not gonna get my, uh, my points there, so there we go. They didn't have Sabbath, which is why Yaga, so they can still eat something, but it's gonna be like the Emissary or my my Wraith. So that is fine. Uh, they can get the Slizzard down, but yeah, they're, they're basically over. The only annoying thing is that, yeah, that's what Yaga now did, is that I don't have two Succubuses right next to each other, but I can still trigger all the look. Ah, and that's not enough, yeah, okay. That's two points at least, um, and then I only wouldn't have gotten one extra point with the uh, Andrega one in here. And we get our Succubus back, so 99 points against 54, so Erden might be something, but let's not think about Erden. What is that gonna be? Oh yeah, Lydia, of course. Lydia is gonna be Hideous Feast, that is fine. And then that is also not gonna be enough. There we go, 96-74. That was a very Nilfgaard heavy episode, but uh, there we have it. So there we have it, even if all ults are against you, because Nilfgaard is a very tough matchup uh, with this deck, because Nilfgaard can just do everything to block you, like steal cards, grab cards from your deck and stuff like that. We definitely managed pretty well, it, even against the Masquerade Ball deck, which is almost a perfect match against this deck. You'll have so many poisons that you can just kill everything. Um, we, we still got a draw, so that was... Uh, that was very enriching for me as well. Didn't expect those three matches to go as well as that. So uh, there we go. The deck list once more. You can also check it in the link in the description. And uh, don't forget to upvote it there because that's uh, always very much appreciated. The uh, response on my previous deck was actually really, really nice. That was uh, really well appreciated. So thank you guys for that support. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this deck just as much. The Sensual Nom Noms deck. And with that all said, I think it's high time that we end this probably pretty lengthy video again. But again, I try to make my content as approachable as possible, where you can just select what you want to view and take from it what you will. Um, so if you have any feedback on this deck, let me know in the comment section down below. I really like to discuss these decks further down there, because uh, any improvements I can do to this deck would be really handy, because I'm uh, very close to pro rank, but just not there yet. So. Uh, Hopefully this deck helps you out in that exactly as well. And uh, I'll see you all in the next episode. So thank you enormously for watching. And I'd like to see you in the next episode of Brandage. Goodbye and stay nutty.